see you're hungry. I know just the thing. The story takes place in the Ice Age, but it was shaped in Connecticut at Blue Sky Studios, a subsidiary of 20th Century Fox. In the third animated Ice Age film, Ray Romano and Queen Latifah are back as Mammoth's doing, Manny and idea. Ellie. Ellie, talk to the trunk. Scrat, the prehistoric squirrel rat, who was so popular in the earlier films, is taking on a bigger role this time and meeting his lady love, Scrat-A. In Greenwich, animators are hard at work on his story. Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. The process begins when screenwriters turn over their script to storyboard artist Eric Favela. The script may say something, a, a very basic action, Scrat comes out from behind a tree and sniffs, and that may look something like, you know, I have the tree here, I arrange it how I think it should look in the movie. For a sequence in the film that may last only a few minutes, Eric draws some 500 panels. We can move things around if we need to or, or shrink. Jake Parker is one of the designers creating a look for the film. It's very angular. Uh, there's lots of sharp shapes, uh, uh, almost as if it's carved out of ice. His paintings, some done on the computer screen and some on paper, become the virtual sets for the film. Say we wanted another mammoth in the foreground here, standing on here, you know, I'll pick a brush and then I can actually uh, draw this mammoth here, block him in, you know, do a trunk coming out there and, you know, I'll, I'll work in that and, and just develop it. While the designers are working on the sets, Mike DeFeo is sculpting Scrat in polymer clay. When it's drawn out or you're just sort of speculating on what those poses might work, uh, you know, on paper, when you get them in 3D, you find a lot more that you can finesse it. This is our little baby dino. As you can see, he's just kind of like a big old puppy. He's got a giant head, <laughs> giant feet, and uh, even though he's got teeth that'll probably take your head off, he's looking very, very cute. But this is not claymation, where a physical character is placed on a real set and then moved slightly in each frame, as in stop-motion animation. Blue Sky Studios specializes in photorealistic, high-resolution, computer-generated character animation and rendering. On a live-action set, a cinematographer would lay down the marks for the actors, use the stand-ins for lighting, set up where the camera position would be, plan the lighting, follow production all the way through to make sure all the shots go according to plan, and that's basically what layout is. In computer-generated animation, there is no camera, no set, and no actual lighting. All of that is virtual and complicated. Rob showed us three versions of a sequence with Scrat and Scrat-A, each one more detailed than the last. It's all about camera placement, path of action. Everything gets final modeled, it gets final materialized. The effects start to move into place. Once that's done, all those elements come back together into one place and the shots get lit and then they're final. So this is what you're going to see now are the master final lit shots with all, all elements in place. Brian Keane says the process of making an Ice Age film takes about three and a half years versus a live action film which might be shot in six months. For a 90 minute movie at 24 frames a second that's approximately 130,000 frames of individual art that have to be created and digitized and, and brought to life and, and rendered with our proprietary software. If you were to fire a, a ray of light from a light source it calculates how many different points of intersection that ray of light will hit. It might be the way it would bounce within a character's hair to the way it would reflect and, and bounce and move through water. Some of it would deflect into the water, some of it would bounce off the water. It's the visual representation of a world that exists only in the computer. The final version right here, which I'll show you first. Jim Bresnahan has been an animator for 14 years. You know, in animation, what we like to do is take those little moments where there are pauses and where actually not a lot is happening, 
um, and, and just try to sell like perhaps a little bit of a, a thought process with the eye shifts and things of that nature. He manipulates Scrat with a computer device called a picker that allows him to control any part of Scrat's anatomy. When he descends, his eyeballs stretch out, and then when he stops, they squash. And that's an animation principle called squash and stretch you may have heard of. Started way back with Disney, but we try to do that in uh, 3D animation wherever we can. We, we really follow the old principles of animation. But in this new medium, math counts. So we can tell it, you know, frame 210 here, it was, you know, the value was 0.6. Meaning Scrat's eyelid was about half closed. Here's the scene as it appears in the film. In 10 years, Blue Sky has expanded from 50 people to nearly 350. The need for a building that could house them all on one floor led them from Westchester to Connecticut. That and... Very, very extraordinarily aggressive tax credit program that um, is, is one of the best in the nation. Their job is to come to work every day and want to make someone happy, cry, make them laugh and make them forget about what it is that, you know, might be troubling them in a particular day to just go to the movie and have a good time. That passion is the thing that I'm the most proud of. A passion for animation. <laughs> At Blue Sky Studios, it's Positively Connecticut. No, 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 no.